Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to look at factoring with the box method and this will be an introduction to this method and we will cover a basic example to start with this example over here and then we'll have a little bit more complicated example over here. The advantages of the box method are that it will work with any trinomial that you're trying to factor no matter how complicated uh, the trinomial gets. It will also work when you have trinomials with multiple variables in them. So let's say you had an X and a Y uh, in the trinomial or an M and an N in the trinomial. It will work for that too. But in this in this first video here we're just going to look at a single variable trinomial here just like these two. Um, on a very simple trinomial like this one there are certainly uh, your mental factoring that you could do here would would work and, and probably be a more pro appropriate method. But again, the advantage of the box method is that it will work for anything. Uh, in this first video, again, we'll just cover some basic examples here. I will put up some additional videos for my students so that you can see how to work with some uh, additional more complicated examples okay so the first thing that we want to do obviously is draw a box hence the name box method so we're going to draw a box here and we're going to split it into four equal parts here all right the first step that we want to do is write our x squared term our first term uh, right here in this box okay so we're taking this and we're going to put it right there all right, so we'll write that x squared. Next step, we want to take our last term, our constant term, and put it right here. I do want to tell you that it's important to write it in this order, in this descending order. The squared term, then the first degree term, and then the uh, constant. We need to make sure that it's in this standard uh, form here in order for these steps to work out correctly. Okay, so for example, if this was written negative 3x, plus x squared minus 10, you would want to rearrange it so that it was in this form. That, that's all I mean by uh, making sure that it's in the appropriate order. Okay, all right, back on track here. So we've written this term in the, this upper left box. We've written the last term, the constant term, in this lower right box. Now, next step, we need to take a product between these two. So we need to multiply those together. So negative 10 times x squared gives us a negative 10x squared. All right. Now, next step, we want to take this middle term, the x term, and we want to uh, write this down. So we've got negative 3x down here. Okay, these two parts, this product and this sum here, are important because we want two factors that would multiply together to give us a negative 10x squared, but when added together would give us a negative 3x. Okay, that's what we want to have happen here. So let's write our uh, 10x squared here. And we could go ahead and apply the sign or just work with the signs later, it doesn't matter. All right, so to give us uh, 10x squared, we would need um, factors of that. So we could have a uh, x and a 10x. All right. So if we add those, that's a 10, uh, 11x. If we subtract them, it's a 9x. So that satisfies our product part, 10x times x, giving us 10x squared. But it doesn't satisfy this part, giving us the sum. So we need to keep working here. So next would be a 2x and a 5x. All right. If we multiply these two, we get the 10x squared. If we add them, we get 7x. If we subtract them, we get 3x. So we've got our... our terms here. We've got our products here. So, and it doesn't matter where we write them. So I'm just going to write it 2x and 5x. Now we need to apply our signs. Don't forget to apply our signs. So we need a negative 10x squared. So that means one of these has to be negative, either the 5x or the 2x. The next thing we look at is this sum right here. Since that sum is negative, then that means that our biggest number, so in this case 5, 5x would win this sign right here. All right, so that's going to be a minus 5x and the plus 2x there. Okay, so uh, again, if you're first learning this, it just takes practice, so watch the video a few times until you get the steps down, but once you get it down, it'll make factoring very easy for you. All right, the next thing that we have to look for 
we are going to pull out greatest common factors from this column, this column, this row, and this row. All right. Now, two very important columns uh, are locations are this one and this one. And the reason that is is because if either of these two locations has a negative, then the greatest common factor we pull out must also have a negative. Okay, that's just a rule uh, to make this method work. So that's very important to keep in mind. In this case, we have a negative here. So our term that our greatest common factor that we pull out of this column should also be negative. Okay, so the greatest common factor between negative 5x and negative 10 is just a negative 5. All right, if you need help on greatest common factor, then look for some additional videos on that, but it's beyond the scope of this video at this point. All right, let's look at this column right here. So the greatest common factor here is just an x. All right, so now we have one factor identified right here, x minus 5. x minus 5. Okay, now this row and this row will give us our next factor. Okay, so we're looking right here. What's our greatest common factor? It's just an x. Just an x. Here, um, since this is positive, we know this will be positive, and the greatest common factor here is just a 2. And we have, now have our other factor, x minus 5, and then x plus 2. Okay, now we can multiply these two binomials together and see if we get this trinomial to check it. Uh, so let's do that real quick. So we have x times x, x squared. x times 2, 2x. Negative 5 times x, negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2, a negative 10. Combine our like terms and we get an x squared. 2x minus 5x is a minus 3x. And then we have the minus 10. And as you can see, we end with what we started with, so we know that our factoring is correct. Okay? Okay. In this next example, we're going to do the same thing. First step, we're going to draw our box here. And then split it into four equal pieces. Then we're going to take this n squared term here and put it right here in this upper left box. So that's 3n squared there. Take the constant term, put it down here in the lower right box. That's 40. Then take the product between these two. So that's 120n squared. Write that here, 120n squared. Then we take this middle term and put it down here. And that needs to be our sum when we put these two factors together. Okay, we want two things when multiplied together give us 120 n squared and when added or summed give us a negative 29 n. Okay so we're gonna write our 120 n squared here. We'll worry about the signs once we put them in the boxes here. So 120 n squared so let's see we would have could have a 1 n and 120 n. Okay that's not it. T together that's a 121 n or a 119 n depending on how we apply the signs. So that's that's not going to work. Next would be a 2n and a 60n. Okay, again, satisfies our product of 120n squared, but when we sum them, it either gives us a 62n or a 58n, depending on how we apply the signs. Okay, so that's not going to work. Uh, next would be a 3n and a 40n. Okay. Put those together, that's either 43n or 37n. That's not going to work. Um, next would be 4n and 30n. So that's either 34 or 26. That's not going to work. Getting closer, though. Next would be a 5n and a 24n. Okay, together, that's a 29n or a 19n. Okay, so the 29n is what we need. So here... Here are our two factors that we need. Doesn't matter where we put which one. So uh, I'm going to put, I'll just go ahead and put 24 in here and 5 in here. Okay, now we apply our signs. So this is positive. The product is positive. So that either means these two have to be positive or both negative. In this case, uh, our sum is a negative. So that means both of these must be negative. 
So negative 24n times negative 5n gives us the 120n squared, positive, and negative 24n plus a negative 5n gives us the negative 29n sum. So we know uh, that everything should be uh, good to go from this point. All right, so now we want to take the greatest common factor from this column. Again, we have a negative here, so we've got to have a negative here. Remember this location and this location, the signs matter. Okay, so uh, let's see, a negative four, we could use, but a negative eight, negative eight is going to be the largest, uh, the greatest common factor here, so we'll take that out. And now we'll move to this column right here. So here, the three and the five don't have a greatest common factor, but the n squared and the n do, so that's just an n. So there is one of our factors identified, n minus eight. Uh, next, for this row, uh, 3 and 24, uh, 3 will come out of that, and then n squared and n, and n will come out of that. So there's our 3n. Uh, here, signs matter, so we know we're going to have a negative here uh, because we have a negative in this box. Um, we don't have an n term over here, so we can't pull out the n, so it's just going to be the negative 5 here. And there we have our last uh, term. We've got a 3n minus 5. So the last factor is 3n minus 5. Okay, so we have n minus 8 and 3n minus 5. Uh, we can check that. If you've uh, used the box method to multiply binomials like this, uh, we'll, uh, I use just drawing arrows over here. So let's draw an, a little box here and um, use that box method to multiply these two and make sure we did it right. All right, so we had n minus 8 and we had 3n minus 5. So let's multiply these and make sure we come up with 3n squared minus 29n plus 40, and then we'll be all done. So 3n times n, 3n squared. 3n times negative 8, negative 24n. Negative 5 times n, negative 5n. Negative 5 times negative 8 is plus 40. Notice that this box looks the same as this one, so we know it's right. So we've got a uh, write it over here. We've got a 3n squared. We've got a minus 24n. We've got a minus 5n. And then we've got a plus 40. So we combine lot of terms and we get a 3n squared minus 29n plus 40. Put the n there. Okay, so we ended up with what we started with, so we know we did it correct. Okay, pay attention for some additional videos. Um, with some other examples on how to apply the box method. You may have to watch this video a time or two to get the, the method down and you'll, you'll definitely have to practice. And with math, of course, practice makes perfect. So the more you use the method, the more you'll have the steps memorized and it'll become second nature and you'll be able to factor any trinomial that your teacher puts in front of you. All right, so Mr. Howard signing off here. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the videos. Please post questions and comments and I'm always here to help. See you in the next video.